Hey guys, welcome back to Ontario Gardening. Today we're going to dive right into talking about feeding some of the birds you can find in your backyard here in Ontario. I just wanted to show you this bird feeding station I got off Amazon last week. So this one was $60. It was $10 more than most feeding stations, but most feeding stations only come with the seven foot pole. For the extra $10, this one actually came with five different feeding tubes. So the value for the extra $10 is amazing because if you go to Walmart or even the dollar store, you're running a few dollars for each and every single one of them. So this $60 piece could quickly become $100 if you're not careful. So we're gonna look at what types of food we're putting into these feeders and what types of birds that might attract to your yard. So the first feeder we have is just your generic wild bird food tube feeder. This is the one that came with the kit. This is the bird food that everybody thinks of when you talk about feeding the birds. Everyone runs out and gets the mix, which is perfect because it attracts a bunch of different birds because it has a bunch of different bird seed in it. So if you're looking for something that's just a quick pour and go and something that you can find year round in the store, this is the perfect feeder for you. This is the one that I have, I've had for a long time. And this is the one that will stay out all winter as well. So speaking of winter feeding here in Ontario, I just wanna talk about that really quick. The reason we use a feeder like this with an overhang on it is because we get so much cold and wetness and snow here in Ontario that if you leave your bird food out and it gets wet, it actually develops harmful bacteria to the birds. So a simple solution for this is just getting a bird feeder that, like I said, has an overhang or has some sort of protection for the seed from that cold and from that wet. The second feeder that came with this station is the small mesh feeder. Now this is perfect for holding smaller types of blends. Um, such as niger seed, thistle, and that attracts all of the smaller little birds. So you're talking things like your goldfinches, your juncos, your chickadees, and these are perfect feeders because they're a lot less messy. You don't typically put things in here that has shells or that's going to make a mess on the ground. So this is great if you're looking for something that's not messy and it's super easy and small little seeds to attract the tiny little birds. The next type of feeder we have is the larger mesh feeder, and this is perfect to hold things like peanuts. And peanuts, oh, fruit blends as well go great in here. So you, you can do trail mixes, nuts, um, pieces of apple or orange. These are great for attracting things like your woodpeckers, your blue jays, and your bigger wild birds. Do be warned though, that it can attract your squirrels and your chipmunks as well. So you might wanna steer clear of that if you're not interested in having those little rodents in your yard. The other thing to note about putting fruit in a feeder is the other types of animals that you might have in your yard. For example, I wouldn't use a trail mix with raisins in it because I have dogs and raisins aren't necessarily great for dogs. So if they get on the ground and my dogs come along and eat them, that could be a crappy situation. So just be mindful of what you're putting inside of there. And the other thing to note with fruit and those type of things, if it's not dried fruit and it's fresh fruit, it's going to rot pretty fast. It's going to attract insects and other types of raccoons and that sort of thing. So it's going to be have to be changed frequently. So just be mindful of that if you're not looking for a lot of work. Peanuts, honestly, easiest way to go. The side of the pole for this one came with this tray here that just attaches to the side. And these are perfect for your ground feeding birds. Now, if you're not familiar with ground feeding birds, not all birds in your backyard can actually perch or land on a bird feeder. And they like to peck things off the ground. Things like that would be your morning doves, your grackles, blackbirds, and the larger birds like that. So with that being said, I didn't know that. So for the longest time, the birds would come and shake and shake and shake my feeders and put all of the bird food all over the ground and essentially out of my feeder. And I didn't know that that was because they were bird feeding or sorry, ground feeding birds. So this is perfect because it comes with a tray 
for them and they leave my bird feeders alone. So you can put things like your mealworms or inst dried insects in there. I steer clear of that. I don't really like to deal with bugs. So I actually put the black sunflower seed in there. And those are formulated for you know all of your outdoor birds as well anything that can break these shells open they're great for cardinals i find that the cardinals love the sunflower seeds so again ground feeding birds you could put wild bird food in there you could even put like i said um trail mix or anything you can put anything in there but just be mindful that it's going to be your ground feeding birds and you might not want to waste fruit on blackbirds the last feeder that it came with is your suet holders and this one I got from the dollar store a few years ago. It's, I'm still holding it strong but this is the one that came with the kit. So if you're not familiar with what a suet is, it's basically um, lard in a block with different types of bird food in it. Typically a wild food mix. You can make your own. It is pretty time consuming and um, I personally just would rather buy them. I haven't experimented with making them yet. If you go to a feed store, they're pretty cheap there. One thing to note about suets, um, especially if you're making your own, they can go bad in the sun pretty fast. I mean, essentially it is just lard from animal fat. So you got to be careful and just keep an eye that they're not going bad before the birds eat them because of course that could be harmful to the birds. The last two feeders I'm quickly going to touch on are actually not seed feeders at all. They are nectar feeders. So to the right here you have your classic hummingbird feeder which is red in color, usually attracts the little birds. And it is filled with either pre-made nectar that you buy at the store or you can just do a sugar and water on the stove. Um, the downfall to this feeder is that it's sticky and it's messy and it attracts bugs and insects. One year we actually had ants all over our fence and all over the feeder, which made it pretty undesirable to want to do it again. But my grandma actually taught me a trick. If you put Vaseline on either the hook or the post that you have it on, the ants can get past it. So it's not too, too bad if you're looking to attract these little birds to your garden. The feeder that we have to the left here is our Oriole feeder. And that one is orange in color, again, to attract that specific type of bird. Orioles will actually eat off of suets and, and insects as well. So you can just use whatever you have if you don't want to get an actual Oriole feeder, but they will be more attracted to the nectar and actually little pieces of fruit. They really enjoy apple slices and orange slices that you can actually just hang right on the sides there. Um, they also enjoy bananas and strawberries and things like that. And then this one you can put nectar right down the middle. So again, the problem with that, if you are just the type that wants to leave and go, you might not want to use fruit as it rots pretty easy, attracts raccoons and insects and that sort of thing. So if you want to just dump and go, this one's not really the one for you because you're going to have to clean it pretty constantly. One thing I didn't know in my last little segment about the nectar feeders is two little tips that they recommend for them. The first tip being that you should usually put your nectar feeders away from your other seed feeders. And the reason for this is because hummingbirds and big birds tend to get very territorial with one another. So just to avoid any fights or things getting knocked down or basically not attracting birds to your yard at all, you want to get the hummingbird feeders or then any of the nectar feeders away from your other feeders. The other thing they suggest, because nectar spoils so quickly in the sun, sometimes we're talking a matter of two hours that this, the nectar can spoil, putting your nectar feeders in the shade. So if you have a shaded area of your yard, you want to put them there as opposed to directly in the sun, and that will prevent you from having to change it or potentially um, making the birds sick. Something really cool before we go that I want to show you guys is another purchase that I actually got on Amazon. This is was $7. It is a pamphlet to all of your birds that you can find here in Ontario. The awesome thing about this, there's two reasons I love this. Most of your common backyard birds are found on the back here. What I love about this is the first thing is it shows you for male and for female, 
what the different birds might look like. So for example, if you're looking at the Oriole, if you're looking at an orange one, you're looking at a different sex than you are if you're looking at the yellow one. So that's really, really cool when identifying birds, when you're first starting out or if you're um, not familiar with what you're actually looking at, this is an awesome guide. The second thing is, is they break these down, where are we here, into categories. So when you're looking at starting a bird feeding station, or if you're just looking to start feeding birds at all, you can look at the different categories and get an idea of what type of food you're gonna need and what type of feeder that you're gonna need. So this is an awesome, offer, awesome reference point. Um, I've gotten familiar with most of my birds just looking at this and referencing this. So I would highly recommend this if anybody's just starting out. One last little tip is for storing your bird seed, especially in the winter. We have little mice and chipmunks and critters that like to live in our shed in the winter time. So we went to the dollar store and we got these cereal containers and we put our stuff in the cereal containers. They're a hard enough plastic that they can't get through, any of the rodents can't get through to eat it. And it's also really cool because they have the easy pour spouts because they are cereal dispensers. So it makes it super easy for pouring your bird food into your feeders. So that's all for today. I just want to thank you for joining us again and listening to my spiel about the birds. Join us next time where we're going to do a really cool video about what we can plant in the next week or so in April here in Ontario in our vegetable garden. Thanks so much. Bye.